First Master Arif, I think you have a fantastic club here. And, and I think it, it reminds me of why I originally joined Toastmasters. I'll tell you a little bit about that, but first of all, I'd like to say, when I first arrived here, I thought it, I, I thought it was an all all female club, all all, all women's club, oh my God. because there weren't many men, and all the men arrived late, which says something about the men. And I, I sat down and I looked at all these beautiful women, and I thought, well, now I know why Arif goes to Toastmasters, <laughs> because there's all these beautiful women in his in his home club, but. Uh, Fellow Toastmasters, what Arif didn't explain to you, I'm currently what I would call the Charter President of uh, the Advanced Toastmasters Club, Triple A, and Arif is one of our members and it's open to anyone and I noticed on your agenda that you have quite a few CCs. So if you're a CC and you would like to become a dual member with with our club, you're, you're more than welcome. So that's my little bit of a marketing pitch. Okay, I've done a bit of a bit of a sales pitch, but to go back to why I joined Toastmasters, the first meeting I attended was in 2000, and it was in a club in Switzerland, and it's quite it's quite in, it's quite uh, what would you call it ironic, or it's like I've gone in a circle that I end up being here at this at this club because I've just found out that this is owned by a Swiss company, Novartis. And I actually work with Novartis and a lot of Swiss companies in Switzerland. So my first company, oh sorry, my first Toastmasters club I attended was Geneva Toastmasters. And that's a very old club. It's been around for a long time. And I attended that club uh, at the end, I think I can remember, it was about November or December in year 2000. It was when I was just finishing my PhD and I just moved to Switzerland. And my wife was working there and I had two children there. And I, I, I thought, a friend of mine said, oh, there's this thing called Toastmasters. And I thought, well, that sounds a bit strange. What's this name, Toastmasters? And, I thought, is it toast? Is it like little pieces of bread that are toast? And then I thought, no, and then because I, I, I'd been spending quite a bit of time in England and I, I noticed there was quite a few English members and the English are really into, let's make a toast. So I thought maybe it's an old club of all these old English men that are just toasting to, here's to your good luck. I'd like to make a toast. <laughs> but I found out it wasn't about that. So I'd always been someone that quite liked to speak. And as my family and even my children says, we're so happy that you do Toastmasters because you never shut up. You just talk too much. So Toastmasters, I think, is perfect for people like me and obviously like you who like to talk. So originally I came to Toastmasters because I was interested in public speaking and talking. And some of you who's probably been in Toastmasters for a, a little bit longer may know that Toastmasters originally was just about public speaking. Only recently they introduced the leadership track, but originally it was just the public speaking, communication for people that are doing uh, public relations. Toastmasters was originally just about communication and public speaking, but they added this leadership side of things. So that was why I originally joined. But as I've been involved with Toastmasters, my experience of Toastmasters have changed. Okay? I'd like to tell you about another contact of mine, and it's quite interesting because We've got all these wars going on in the Middle East at the moment, and this Toastmaster is actually Syrian, okay? And his name is Odeh, okay? Odeh joined the second club that I was in, which I founded, 
and it was, so it still is, it's called the Lausanne Toastmasters Club in Lausanne in Switzerland. And I set it up and I was an initiator or the founder of that club. And my whole sort of experience of Toastmasters changed. And what I'd like to explain to you is, uh, uh, I have, I'm not sure if I've explained this to Arif, but Oder, the first time he came to Toastmasters, he was very shy. He just sat, he just sat there like this for the first three months. He didn't say anything. Okay? He just sat there very, very quiet. And I think maybe one of the main reasons he didn't say anything was because he, he was scared that his English wasn't too good. So, over the years I got to know Arif quite well, and in fact, Arif is a past president of our Lausanne Toastmasters. Ode, sorry. Ode is a past president of our Toastmasters Club in Lausanne, and I saw a total transformation of this guy. He came in for the first three months he didn't want to say anything. He just sat there, he did timing, he, he, he was like, did some of the other roles, but he didn't want to say anything. But as, as, as his experience changed in Toastmasters, what he got out of Toastmasters, I would say, was something invaluable. You can't put a price on it. It's something that you don't get. I've been in a lot of companies, I've worked in a lot of businesses, and I'd like to say that I think the Toastmasters educational material is probably better than you get in a lot of good management schools because I have actually been in a management school at the Melbourne Business School and then later at, at UTS School of Management in Sydney. And I think the material, these educational books and the manuals that you get in Toastmasters, the leadership manuals, I think I would say a best practice globally. So they're very, very good material. And they're so cheap. And what I also like about Toastmasters is it's hands-on. So to get back to Oder, his whole life changed. And his confidence changed. And after that, you'll be quite happy to know, he got married. After three years of Toastmasters, he got married. Okay? He met the love of his life. I think she flew out from Syria and they got married and now he's working um, I think for a Swiss bank in, in Switzerland and his whole life and confidence changed I personally believe because of Toastmasters. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is I think at the start Toastmasters for me was more about myself but as I mentored and got to be involved with people like Oder. I noticed there was different things you can get out of Toastmasters. I've also been involved in a sort of leadership role and my personal opinions of Toastmasters leadership may differ from a lot of people. Okay? I've had some pretty negative experiences and what I did over a couple of years after I've been like in 10 or so years with Toastmasters I had what I call a Toastmasters detox. I went on a Toastmasters diet. I said, I had enough of Toastmasters. Excuse the French, I'm sick of this shit. No, no more Toastmasters. So I got it completely out of my system. And do you know what I did? I went to Thailand and I got into all this meditation and stuff. And I I became a president of a Rotary Club. <laughs> I said, I had enough of Toastmasters. And there was, I became a member of a Toastmasters Club in Chiang Mai. And they've got in Chiang Mai uh, one Toastmasters Club. And they call it the First Northern Toastmasters Club. I'll tell you why they call it the First Northern Toastmasters Club. There is, in fact, a Chiang Mai Toastmasters Club. But it's run in Thai. Okay? But it's run as I would call a copyright infringement. Okay? The Thai is a little bit like Indonesia. They copy everything. Like gratis, tida harus bayar. Free, free. So someone 
very entrepreneurial, set up the Chiang Mai Toastmasters Club, translated all the manuals into Thai and called it the Chiang Mai Toastmasters Club and is running it as their own business making money. Mm, I told oh Toastmasters International about it and they said, sorry, we can't really do anything and we don't have a program to do it in Thai anyway, so just let them do it. So I became the member of this first toast, first, first Northern Toastmasters Club. And that's why they call themselves First, because they wanted to say it was the first English-speaking Toastmasters Club. So I was a member there for quite a while, but I was also a member of Rotary. Okay, I've got a little bit of a story to tell you about Rotary. I don't know. Has anyone been to any Rotary meetings here? I've been there once. Yeah. Is any anyone a Rotarian? Does anyone um, know anyone that's a Rotarian? Yes. Okay, so whatever I say to you, it doesn't really matter. It's not <laughs> going to upset you. Okay, that's good. So I was a president of a Rotary Club in Thailand, but I left Rotary and I came back to Toastmasters. And I'll tell you why, okay? Uh, in Thailand, there I told you about this copyright thing. <coughs> They have quite a bit of, what would you call in Indonesia, corrupsi, okay? Uh, when I was a member, when I set up this uh, Rotary Club, I set it up as an international Rotary Club. And I wanted it to be the first international English-speaking Rotary Club in Chiang Mai. And we had a lot of, like, bule, and they call them falang in Thailand, a lot of these foreign members. But then we had a lot of Thai members. And what actually happened was the first president that set up the club was doing all these, uh, what they call them in Rotary, is matching grants. Okay? And what a matching grant is, you get money, I don't know if anyone knows, the largest philanthropic foundation in the world is called the Rotary Foundation. So if you have like a LSM, a Lembaga Swadaya Masaraka, or an NGO here, or in Thailand, you can go to Rotary with your project and you can put a thousand dollars up and then you'll get a matching grant from a club in the US or Australia or Japan and then Rotary Foundation will match it again. Okay? So you could raise twenty-five, thirty, sometimes even fifty thousand dollars for one project, okay? Which is quite a lot of money. Okay? So anyway, what happened was there was this past president who came in before me and he was doing all these projects and he was he was basically siphoning money off okay so half of the money was coming in and he was putting half in his bank account and he was using half for the project okay what actually happens is in Thailand there's this I'm not sure if you have it in Indonesia there's something called the cult, uh, it's like a culture of corruption. Mm -hmm. Everyone is involved. Like, for example, you come with me and I will take care of you under the table. And if everyone's involved, and then and that's how it works. Okay, so basically, when I became president, I said I'm going to do an audit of past funds. Okay, and basically, the audit showed that all this money. It disappeared and he didn't like it so then he tried to get rid of me and a little bit like Toastmasters International I got invited to do a district audit okay the head of uh, the audit committee for Rotary International in the US asked me to become the internal auditor for all of Southeast Asia and I looked at the district and I said no because I found out that the district governor was doing the same thing. Okay, so that's my that's my Toastmasters detox experience. After that, I said, "Well, I've had enough of this Rotary and all this." And in Rotary, they have this <coughs> saying, and they say, "Service before self." Okay, but what I actually found out, it's the other way around. It's <laughs> self before service. So, that's a little bit of uh, the experiences that I've had with Toastmasters. 
What I'd like to talk to you today about is table topics. Okay, I've got a little bit of a presentation and I'll turn on my laptop to see if it's working now. But I've been doing table topics for about how long? About 10, 15 years. And what I'm going to be talking to you today about is what I would call the best table topic is a prepared table topic. Okay. How to prepare the best is a prepared table topic. My question for you is why in Toastmasters, this is the question, uh, Aris already heard this, so I won't get him to answer. Why in Toastmasters do you call impromptu speeches table topics? Does anyone know? Anyone? Anyone? Under the table. Under the table. Yeah, that could be a reason. Anyone else? Any other ideas? Why do you call why do you call them table topics? Because the timing, one to two minutes. So when we do a table topic, so we, we don't have much time to talk about yeah. the topic. That could that could be a reason, yes. I have a different theory, okay? Because I've been in Toastmasters for like uh, almost 15 years. My theory is they call them table topics because they're not really impromptu speeches. I'll say that again. Table topics are called table topics because they're not impromptu speeches. Okay? Does that make sense to anyone? Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay. So what I'm going to argue today in this educational is the best table topic is prepared. Okay? So everyone has been saying to you in Toastmasters, table topics are impromptu speeches. Okay? You're going to compete tomorrow and I've competed at district level, I've gone, I've done so many table topic contests. The people who beat me, the people who won, were what? More prepared than I were. I just got there and I thought, oh, I'm pretty, maybe a little bit like you, I'm pretty good. Give me any topic, I can answer it. But there were people that had prepared the topic before. Okay? So, how do, you, how do you do it? I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So, table topics is an impromptu, and I've got question marks there. Is it really an impromptu session of the, table to of the Toastmasters meeting, where individuals respond to questions with unrehearsed, unrehearsed mini-speeches? The table topics range from politics, current events to hobbies and entertainment. Table topics is fast, lively and entertaining. Has anyone in here done the advanced man this advanced manual on specialty speeches? Okay. You may remember that in the advanced manual there is what the project one is speak off the cuff. Okay? And speaking of the cuff, I've done this project, it says to you, prepare four to five topics and the content so you know what you're going to be saying. Okay? This is good advice for you tomorrow. So prepare about four to five topics and, and mini speeches that you can use in any situation. Okay? This is what this manual says to you. Prepare a table topic. Okay? So table topics develop skills in listening, thinking, organising and speaking. These are the skills that we focus on. And there's different types of procedures. 
you've seen different people come in. There's a question. Ask the question. Call on an individual. I'd like to call you, Arif. Could you respond to this question? And then repeat the question. Okay? What I would like to propose, and I know it's done in a lot of uh, Indonesian clubs, is people get up there and they say, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests, I would like to propose, forget about that. Mm -hmm. You only have two minutes. Yeah. If you spend 15 to 20 seconds introducing yourself, saying contest chair, fellow, blah, 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 forget about that. Because you've already wasted probably 15, 20% of your speech. So get in there straight away. For example, um, what was the, uh, the theme of today? So if you've got that as a theme, go straight into it say, the best holiday I ever went on was to Georgia Carter. And while I was there, I met the most handsome man who looked like, who looked like him or looked like him. And that straight away catches the audience's attention. Then you can say, fellow Toastmasters, that was the best holiday uh, travelling experience I ever had. So you sort of, you already, you start with something to attract their attention. So, table topics are impromptu speaking opportunity and are really a mini speech, okay? What I also advise a lot of um, table topic speakers is the best thing you can do in a table topics is say something like I just did at the start that attracts people's attention and then finish with a bang, finish with something that the audience will remember. My question for you all is why? Why do you do that? Why do you finish? Why do you start with a good opening and finish with a good conclusion? Does anyone know? Anyone got any ideas? Yeah, good, good. Most people, I'm not saying everyone is stupid, right? <laughs> but a lot of people can't remember everything you said. Yeah. You might say a few funny things, you know, that was a funny joke about Georgia Carter and the handsome man that you met, or something like that. But most people only remember what you said at the start and what you said at the end. The most important part, I personally think, is the conclusion. Okay? So you've got your whole speech. Start your speech, try to start it in a nice fluid way with a good conclusion. Make two, or one or two points, maximum three points, and then just go to your conclusion. As you're speaking, you have time. If you've prepared a couple of topics already, you have time to think about the best way to finish. For example, uh, the travelling experience. You can maybe conclude by saying, I've just told you about my best travelling experience in Georgia Carter. I would like to encourage you all to go to Georgia Carter or travel as much as possible. And if you'd like to go or if you have any problems, this is my phone number. So please give me a call because I'm free to go any weekend. So you finish in a way that attracts people's attention. And people go, oh, this guy, he maybe wants to go with me. I'm not saying I want to give everyone my mobile phone number so that I can go with you to Georgia, but it's something different. And people remember that. Okay. Table topics master, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. I personally think you don't need that. If you want to, if you're feeling a bit nervous, <coughs> maybe that's okay. Maybe just a, a good a good evening, I would say forget it. You don't have much time. So it is a courtesy greeting which always gives you a few seconds to evaluate the question and think of an answer. I would disagree with that. Okay? I would give you another strategy that maybe works even better. I don't know if you know, but when you're doing your table topics tomorrow, the timer, if you ask Arif, 
when do you start timing a table topic? So after first, the uh, voice utter or the first verbal or utterance, yeah. first sound you make. Yeah. So you can stand there for about five seconds. Don't start. I've seen some people, like, and they just start straight away. Stand there, get get a feel for the audience. Look at how many beautiful women and handsome men are in the room, and then start. Okay, but. I would I would say forget about this. What you, you, you don't have enough time. These are, are different ways you can open. I gave you an example of travelling to Georgia. Restate the question. Thank you for asking that excellent question. This is what it means to me. Or, for example, you can use a quote. One quote that I like to use is Forrest Gump. <laughs> I like to say, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And then, if you wanted to conclude with that, you could say, and in my life, I've had some pretty sweet chocolates, but I've had some chocolates that taste horrible. And I've just told you about the very sweet chocolates. And I hope you all have such as sweet chocolates like me or something. You could finish like that. And one, as I said, conclusions are very important. One other way to do it is use humour. I've been waiting a full six months for someone to ask me that question. Try to say something funny. If you, if you um, finish with something humorous and it's a very, very good joke and you've spent your two minutes thinking of a really good joke, or you ever, as I said, you've prepared four or five little mini speeches already, then you just go straight to your uh, end joke and people go, whoa, that's great, that was a great speech. I heard a New Zealander once and he got a table topic about um, joining the military, okay, because it was run by this old Australian guy who was a military man and he's like walking around like this and his name was Roy and he, he's a great leader and he had a background in the UN and he said look at Roy you can join the military like Roy you can see the world you can think of a nice humorous way to finish that's really good because you get really good um, you get very good um, what do you call it points from your judges if you're competing. So the body should be like this, past, present, future, or maybe before and after. Compare and contrast. So to organise the answers to a question, pick a format and follow it throughout your response. So for example, like Georgia, this is when I went to Georgia. And at the moment, this is what's happening. But in the future, when I go to Georgia, uh, I think you said we're going next week. When are we going next back? Week, next week. You can talk about what that's going to be. You can say that that handsome man that I met last time I was in Georgia. The real reason I'm going back to Georgia is to see him because after I met him the first time, he changed my life, and I've been looking forward to seeing him since I was last in Georgia, and hopefully. I can bring him back and show you all and introduce him to my club yeah. or something like that. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, <laughs> but maybe it will because it looked like you met some very handsome men. So, so that's a way to do uh, with the format. And then the summary, as I was saying, the conclusion, to summarise. So in answer to the question, what I would like to also emphasize is I asked the question at the start, table topics. Okay? I I was a I've been a judge in table topics many times, and the worst thing as a judge is to hear someone talk about this is my life story, I had a very blah 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 blah, but not related to the topic. So whatever you do. If you forget, if you talk about your mother and you, your handsome boyfriend or whatever, at the end, 
please, for the judge's sake and for the old Toastmaster's sake, try to relate it back to the topic because it's called a table topic. It's not called a table no topic. It's like a topic. So talk about the topic because that's what you're given. So if in the, in the summary, in the conclusion, you can answer the question, for example, uh, the question is, what is the best, best traveling experience you ever had? You say, the best traveling experience I ever had was when I went here. And that answers the question. So in summary, it's important because you re-emphasize what you have said. And it tells the audience that you're about to finish. So you know you're almost ready to conclude. So this is the ending. Restate the question. Restate the opening quote. Experience in Georgia. Repeat the same humour. Try to make a link. A link between the introduction and the conclusion. Don't introduce new material. I've heard a lot of table topics and people try to bring in some... They, they have this sort of brain freeze and they go... Ugh, and they try to introduce something that's completely unrelated in the last two seconds. And it's like, why did you do that? That was a really good table topic. All you need to do is link it back to like is like a box of chocolates and it's perfect uh, and return control to the table topics master so that's basically all i'm saying there then just this is for the contest um contestants for tomorrow this is particularly important for you you're listening aren't you okay okay so what i'm going to tell you is contestants uh, there's actual procedures. You're brought out of the room and then you come back in one at a time. And that means that no contestant hears the topic before anyone else. And technically you should get a topic that's been in an envelope, that's been sealed or something like that. And then the um, judges evaluate you based on this. For you tomorrow, this is particularly important. If you're doing a speech, a table topic speech, how should you organise your speech? What should you emphasise? Look at this. 30% speech development, 25% effectiveness. So, whatever you do, make sure you put... As I said to you, emphasis on the opening body conclusion. Logic, directness, enthusiasm, achievement of purpose and audience response. These are going to get you 55 points percent already. <coughs> if you've got 55%, you know, just the physical voice and language are the only one. You just have to be able to speak English fairly well and physically look okay and um, basically use the right language with the right voice and change your different tone. So, as a contest participant, emphasise these points because that's what's going to give you the big marks tomorrow. And finally, uh, there's two types of judges. There's a normal, what we call just official judge, but then there's a tie-breaking judge. So what usually happens is people shouldn't really know who the judges are, but sometimes in Indonesia they do, or they can have a guess, which as we've talked about in AAA is not a good thing for certain people <laughs> that do speeches that may be not following the right procedures. So most, most of the judges just do um, first, second and third. And then if you're first, you get three points. If you're second, you get two, and then third, you get one. If there's a dead heat, say if like Arif and I both do table topics, and we both say get 12 points, okay? Then they bring the tie-breaking judge in, and the tie-breaking judge just has one, two, three, okay? So if 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 it's probably me, if I'm number one and Arif's number two 
on the tie-breaking judge. That means I win. Sorry, Arif. But I just, I just won the contest. So that's basically all I have to say about that. It's great to speak to you all tonight. I hope I've managed to explain to you all about what Toastmasters is meant to me and my different experiences and detoxing Toastmasters. But as I said to you, with table topics, I strongly believe, and following the, the, man, the advanced manual on speaking off the cuff, I think the best table topics is a prepared table topics. Does, any, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, when he asked if, uh, what's the best way to prepare a table topic when, when the topic uh, we know is the second that we we are in front of the people, when the topic table topic master, or, or the second that we open the envelope. What's the best way to prepare? Yeah. Okay. What I would suggest is you have about five general stories that you can talk about that cover a range of different topics. Okay. What this advises, I'll give you what this advises. It says how to prepare. It says you build your impromptu material well in advance through reading, listening, and carefully organising your thoughts. Keep abreast of latest developments in your career. Attend conferences, seminars, and conventions. So look at what's going on in the media. But what I did when I was competing is I prepared about five general speeches about a range of different topics that I could use. Then when I got, say, the topic, um, like tonight, uh, uh, travelling experiences, I just introduced it by saying, this is the best travel experience I, I ever had. And then I started talking about something I prepared on, on Thailand. And then I went to just conclude by repeating the question. So if you have about, I'd say, five general categories of content that you're going to talk about, you can put any introduction or conclusion in front of them. Thank you. So it's like setting up some stories yeah. and you just give the context. Yeah. So the context is the question yeah. in the table topics. It's like that. Right. So have, like, uh, for tomorrow, for example, mm -hmm. have a five general stories you can use. But then depending on what the answer, the, the question is, for example, uh, I think last week at, uh, at AAA, what was the question we had? On scams. scams. So like, what's the worst scam that you had? You might be able, you might have a story about your family or your brother or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or like Arif had a story that he's probably told everyone about it's <laughs> Buller that he used to work with, and he used that example. So have general stories about your own life that you think are quite funny, and then when you get the topic, just put it in front. But as I said, because it's a table topic, make sure you relate it enough to the topic. Because I've seen con contests where the speaker was great, really good material, but it wasn't related to the topic. And as I said, if, if you look um, just back back here at this this one here, if you look at the the percentages, this is for logic, uh, effectiveness, enthusiasm, and purpose. Okay, so if you're not sticking to the actual topic, you're going to get marked down in that. That's going to you're going to be marked down heavily in that, so you're not going to get the full 25, you might only get 10 points. So whatever you do related to the topic. Any other questions? Well, well thank you everyone, and now I would like to hand the meeting back to the postmaster.